She's an international pop star. She's a Hollywood actress. She's a professional hip hop dancer. She's a savvy businesswoman. Of course, I'm talking about none other than Jennifer Lopez. And in this video, she's also going to be your English teacher. That's right, this lesson, you're going to learn phrasal verbs with take directly from Jennifer Lopez. How awesome does that sound? Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforceenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new video. Now, let's get started with this lesson. This week, you're going to add really common phrasal verbs with take to your vocabulary. And you're going to do that by studying an interview that Jennifer Lopez did with LinkedIn. Now, this is a really awesome clip because LinkedIn is a business networking site, right? So in this clip, you're going to be exposed to a really natural and professional style of English. A style of English that's going to help you sound like a native English speaker. Now, this is a lesson that I prepared for my students in the Finally Fluent Academy, my premium online program. And these two phrasal verbs are so common that I wanted to share them with you. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump onto my computer and I'm going to share the clip where Jennifer Lopez is going to teach you two phrasal verbs with take. Now make sure you have a pen and a piece of paper or something to take notes with because I'm going to quiz you with some listening exercises before you learn these phrasal verbs. And remember, we're studying real world English. So it's going to come at you very quickly. So get ready. And we start immediately with a listening exercise, okay? So get ready for that. With that said, let's jump onto my computer and we're going to start your first listening exercise. All right, our next keyword. The interviewer is going to ask JLo another question and I want you to fill in the rest of the question. I'll play it three times. How are you picking what projects? that you want to take on? How are you picking what projects that you want to take on? How are you picking what projects that you want to take on? How are you picking what projects that you want to take on? So here, our keyword is to take something on. And this is a separable phrasal verb. And it simply means to start working on a new task or project. But in the sense of you accepted it, you accepted a new task or project. So here he's asking her, how are you picking what projects that you want to start or accept? So let's say you're in this staff meeting and you're discussing a new project. And one of your colleagues could say, who has time to take this on? So this would be whatever the new project is, right? So who has time to accept this new project, to start working on this new project? Who has time to take this on? Remember, it's separable, so the pronoun has to come in between. Or another example, Marcos, can you take on the graphic design part of this project? So here, you have an entire project, but somebody could just take on a specific part, right? And in this case, it's the graphic design part. Or maybe you could say, I really regret taking this new project on. Oh, okay. So here we see our verb as separated, take and then our noun in the middle, this new project on, okay? Now, regret, regret is a gerund verb. So notice, I really regret taking this new project on. That's why we have the ing here, because regret is a gerund verb. Another example, I'm under a lot of pressure right now. I took on too many clients. So here in the past, right, I took on 
too many new clients. I, I've always been this person who takes on a lot and, and because I, I love so many things. Okay, so let's do our next listening exercise. So here, you need to fill in three blanks, okay? So pause this, take some time to read it, and I'll play it three times. You know, not taking on something that's gonna take up seven months and yield this much. Right. You know, not taking on something that's gonna take up seven months and yield this much. Right. You know, not taking on something that's gonna take up seven months and yield this much. Right. Not, did you hear this? This is our keyword. Not taking on something that's going to take up seven months and yield this much. Yield, you might not be familiar with this. It simply means to produce a result in. I don't think you'll use it too much, so don't worry about it. So our next keyword is to take up something. Now this is a separable phrasal verb, but I have a asterisk here because we're gonna talk about the structure, okay? And this has a simple meaning. It means simply to use a specific amount, but we use this in the specific context of time, resources, or space. Now think of resources quite broadly because within this we have many different things, right? We have money, we have our effort, we have our human resources, our manpower, and other things as well. So let's take a look at some examples. You could say, this new software takes up so much space. Remember, space was in the context of how we can use it. Now, you can think of this really as just use. This new software uses so much space. Another example, this new client I took on is taking up all of my time. So you're actually going to see these two side by side quite a lot. So don't get confused with these prepositions here. This new client I took on, so I agreed to work with, I accepted them as a new client, is taking up, is using all of my time. Remember, time was one of the things we can take up. Can I store a few things at your place? I promise they won't take up a lot of space. Or how about this bathroom reno is taking up the majority of my savings. So I want you to notice that we modify this a lot. So here, so much, all of, what else? A lot of, the majority of. So we frequently modify this with talking about how much or how little time, effort, resources, money, something takes up. Okay, let's take a look at another example where we see this in a pronoun form. So let's say somebody says, you don't have any room on your hard drive? And then you can reply back and say, nope, this program took it all up, okay? So the it is what? Room, room space on your hard drive, right? This program took it up, and all is one of the ways we modify it. So here, take up, but then our pronoun comes between it. This is the only acceptable form, okay? And so this follows the separable phrasal verb form. But on the last slide, all of our examples with nouns, we actually put the noun after the phrasal verb. So you can go back and look at all those examples. The noun always came after. Now, although this is technically a separable phrasal verb, I don't hear people put the noun in between. And it sounds awkward to me. I couldn't find any hits on Google where people were using it with the noun in between. So I recommend that you follow this structure for the noun form. So you could say, this project took up my whole summer. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it here, okay? But for the pronoun form, it has to come in between. So it follows the separable phrasal verb form for the pronoun. It has to come. There's this only one that's correct. So for example, this project took it up. So let's, now, let's say the context of summer was obvious. This project took it up. 
you know, not taking on something that's going to take up seven months and yield this much. Right. All right, awesome job. You just added two phrasal verbs with take to your vocabulary. These phrasal verbs are so common. They are a regular part of my vocabulary. I use them on a daily basis, and I know they're going to help you sound very fluent and natural as well. So make sure you get really comfortable using these phrasal verbs. So you can do that now by leaving a comment and putting an example sentence with each phrasal verb. So put an example sentence with take on and put an example sentence with take up and put that directly in the comments below because these phrasal verbs aren't going to help you very much if you don't feel confident using them. So practice in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4isenglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, way to go, it's sounding so natural, adding these phrasal verbs to your vocabulary. Awesome job today. Now, don't stop there. Check out this video. And don't forget about this video. And make sure you subscribe. And until next time, bye.